Good afternoon, I'm Bill Langdon. I'd like to talk to you about my EuroGP poster, Incremental Evaluation in Genetic Programming. So the idea is we're going to exploit the fact that in GP, the functions and terminal sets have no side effects. They are pure functions. Uh, although they're pure functions, they can still lose information in the sense that they take two uh, 32-bit arguments and generate a 32-bit answer. Um, what we show is that the trees can be evaluated in any order, and in particular, we're going to evaluate them from the change point and show that the parent and the child can be phenotypically similar, even though they're genetically different. And it's this information loss that gives rise to a smooth landscape for GP. So here on the left hand side, we have a, a tree which is being evaluated in the conventional top down recursive fashion. And then on the right hand side, the same tree being evaluated from the bottom up. So on the left hand side, we start with the subtraction node at the top, number one. Uh, we evaluate its first leaf, uh, 0.026. And then we need its second argument, which is this division node. And we recursively evaluate down until we've evaluated the whole of the tree. But we can get exactly the same answer if we start from anywhere else in the tree. So in particular, if we start from the leaf minus 0.826 and work upwards, uh, we'll come to the multiply operation. That multiply requires a second argument, of course. Um, and what we show is that it returns uh, 0.59368, which is exactly the same answer as it returns in the conventional top-down recursive evaluation. And in particular, we trace all the way up through the, top, the whole of the tree, we'll see that it returns exactly the same answer as it did with the top-down recursive evaluation. If we look at uh, parent and child, um, if, uh, if um, uh, they are identical apart from the inserted uh, and removed subtrees. So if those uh, subtrees happen to be identical, then the parent and child will be identical. And so of course have the same fitness. Uh, if the re remove subtree evaluates the same answer as the inserted subtree, so we can evaluate each subtree independently, uh, if they happen to have the same value, then the whole of the tree will have the same value. So we have a genetic difference, but we still get identical fitness. And the interesting case is where the subtrees evaluate to different values, uh, what happens then? And we can find out by evaluating from the change point up to the root node. And what we'll see is this a progressive fall in the number of test cases where the change is visible as we move towards the root node. So remember that the trees are identical apart from the change. Uh, the fitness evaluation will be identical except on the root from the change to the root node. And what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the parent and the child all the way along this route. The point being, if at any point on a test, test case, the parent and child are identical, they'll remain identical all on the rest of the route to the root node. So we have a chase where we can have a semantic difference between the parent and the child and still get identical fitness. And that's what this uh, little picture is trying to show is uh, the original parent is, are the nodes in black. So those are the, the common part that's common between both parent and child. And then in blue, this is the inserted one. And so we can see that the, uh, the child fitness values are in blue and they they are different between the parent and the child but if we progressively move from the, the division point up uh, then um, they may at some point become identical and if they become identical 
then they'll remain locked identical for the rest of the evaluation. So this is a, a, a picture of showing a large tree where this happens. Uh, the red uh, subtree is code that's been inserted, so it's quite a large change. But as we progressively move up the blue chain of nodes towards the root node at the top, then the um, the difference between the uh, parent and the child gets progressively smaller until by the time we reach the top of the blue chain, the parent and child evaluate to exactly the same value and there's no uh, difference in their fitness. This graph is showing the, the same example. So we can see on the left hand side, we start off with uh, on all 48 test cases, uh, the difference between the parent and the child. But it, as we move up the tree, uh, by the time we've gone up 13 nested levels, then there are three test cases where the values are, are identical. So the parent and child evaluate the same value on those three test cases, and they will remain locked together um, all the way from there to the root node. And we can see that the, the number of test cases where this is true progressively increases until by the time we've got more than 144 nested functions, then all test cases are identical and the fitness of the child and the parent are, must therefore be identical. So we could see that um, as we have crossover points which are further from the root node, they tend to have less effect. You might want to exploit that to design your, your crossovers. So if you wanted to have a smooth uh, fitness landscape, you might put the crossover points farther from the root node. Conversely, if you wanted to make large changes, you might want to put the crossover points close to the root node. What we see is that if the dis if the disruption is all is there's no disruption between the parent and child then selection will quickly uh, uh, converge the population in the sense that everybody in the population has the same fitness even though they are genetically different and i'd like to stress that, that all of this comes all of this dissipation of disruption comes about through information loss. And so we're seeing that the uh, information loss is tending to give a smoother fitness landscape. 